Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about how to mod using DECA, which is a toolkit for modding games like Generation Zero, Rage 2, Just Cause, and Call of the Wild. These are games which are built on the Apex open world game engine used by Avalanche. And then also as an example, I'm going to be changing the hard-coded game bindings, the game controls, for Call of the Wild. Just so you know, there's going to be download links for everything relevant in the description, as well as timestamps, so that you can find specific parts of the video that you are interested in. Alright, so to get started with Deca, you're going to go down to the GitHub, and go down to the releases, and it's important to note that Deca is in pre-release, it's in 0.2.12 right now, which means you can expect it to be very buggy and unreliable but it does work pretty well for Generation Zero and Call of the Wild. You would download the GUI.zip and extract that. It's portable, so you can put that wherever you want. I've already put mine over here, so I can go ahead and close this. Check out GUI, and then I can scroll down to the DUI.exe. Now, you can't just start modding, unfortunately. You have to create a project, and that is where Deca looks at a game and it figures out what all the files are in that game so that it can then f actually extract them and show it to you. The game files are all packaged together and it has to figure out what's actually inside that package. So you go to File, New Project, and then you go to your install directory, so for us it would be the Hunter Call of the Wild, and click on the exe and open that. And he says it would take 40 minutes, on my system it took 25. It's going to take a while to do that. Things will show up in the console log as that works, so you'll know that it's still working. Um, definitely be prepared to wait at least an hour for it to finish doing that. Once it's done that, it'll have the project open. Because I just opened Deca, I don't actually have the project open yet. So I'm going to open a project, um, and it's important to know where this project goes. So one level above the install directory of Deca. So here's where the exe is, one level up it's going to place a work folder and inside there will be a project.json and all the other stuff so we'll go into there project.json and it loads that for us and so this is what Deca will look like after you've made a new project and it's finished its process it'll have these tabs and columns and stuff and this is where you can start actually making mods so the mod we're going to make right now is a adjustment to the way the gamepad works in the Hunter Call of the Wild. So we're going to change some hard-coded bindings that you can't change in the in-game menu, which is actually really broken in and of itself. So we're going to look through the folders here, and we're going to look for a folder that looks like the one that probably would interest us. So it's not going to be AI or animations or anything like that. I was able to find the bindings fairly easily. There is a bin keymap gamepad.bin inside settings. And because I'm playing on gamepad, I'm going to go ahead and select that one. I'm going to take all of these. Some of these ticks won't actually do anything for the bin, but you might as well tick them all so that whatever you select, it will always try to extract every version of that that it can. So I'm going to go ahead and extract it, and it does its thing. It did it. So now I can go into work and extract it. And there we see it. We have our settings file. And we've got our bin and a bin.txt. And we're actually done using Deca for the moment. There's a lot of other functionality, but this is just a really brief introduction to how it works. So I'm going to close Deca. And now we can actually go into how you edit the bin. So first I'm going to go briefly over what even is a bin and how do we edit it. And then I'm actually going to go into changing that bin and it's a little bit complicated because we cannot directly edit the bin there is no convenient tool for doing so the, what we have to do is we have to use a hex editor so i'm using H hxd it's just a piece of software that i like most hex editors are very similar so you can really use whichever one you happen to have or happen to want to use but i do recommend hxd and we are also going to open the bin.txt that Deca put out for us, because that's going to provide all the useful information for us. 
The bin is a compressed file. It's actually a basically a compressed table. It contains a lot of different entries and some of those entries, instead of having the actual information within that entry, it only has the address to that information. It's just very simple compression that we're going to have to deal with and work around. Instead of changing actual bindings, we're going to be changing addresses to them. For example, here's an entry, right? This, this, is, this is one node. And what does this node tell us? Well, it tells us that move backward gamepad. Gamepad, left stick down, is bound to move backwards gamepad. Okay, that makes sense. That's a hard-coded binding that most people probably don't want to change. We have a lot of other ones. The right shoulder is bound to the next tab. Each of these is a hard-coded binding, and each of these has a lot of information with it. The main information that we're interested in is the actual address that we're concerned with. So we're not going to be moving nodes around, we're not going to be adding or deleting them. Um, theoretically, you could, but that's really complicated and way outside the scope of this video. We're just going to be changing some of these. With that explanation out of the way, hopefully we can actually get to making changes that we want. I'm going to do a fairly simple rebinding, but hopefully it will give you a, an idea of other things that you can do with keyboard and mouse bindings, or with other things, maybe in different games. But this is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to be unbinding the things that are on the left shoulder, which is holster weapon and hunter mate, which are not very useful. And I'm going to be moving the button that is currently on D-pad up, and that just opens whenever you press that in game, it opens this little hop bar menu. I'm going to be moving that binding over to the left shoulder. Now it's important to note that you can change the binding for the hunter mate and holster weapon, which are normally both bound to LB, but you cannot get rid of bindings because of course you can't. The game isn't very well made for accessibility. So in order to actually get rid of those bindings, we have to do that in here. We're also going to be moving a binding that cannot normally be moved, which is the pad up bound to, I'm going to call it the hot bar, open hot bar. And that binding is normally just hard coded to the pad up, it cannot be changed at all. We're going to be changing that here too, as an example. So the first thing let's do is let's get rid of the hunter mate. Ooh, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's get rid of the hunter mate and holster. So first of all, let's look for hunter mate. There it is, okay. Now, as you see, it's bound to gamepad left shoulder. And it is bound to that at the offset in this bin, um, 1745. So we scroll down to 1745. And hex works by having numbers 0 through 10, or 0 through 9, and then it goes A, B, C, D, E, and F. So 1749, there's 17, and then 49 is going to be right here. And it's actually a 6 byte long thing. That is the thing that tells the game that Wield Hunter Mate is left shoulder. Now, I'm going to get rid of this, but first what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to record this. So I'm going to go and copy it and paste it over. And I'm keeping track now that this is the code that I'm going to be using for left shoulder. It's actually, for our intents and purposes, this is left shoulder. So I could even label that. So I have that in case I need that. But now that I've copied that out, I can actually get rid of it. So I'm going to go fill that selection with all zeros. That's done. And then holster weapon. There it is. F1D. So we're gonna scroll up it's zero, and then it's at the end. F, and then one is at the beginning again, and then D is near the end. There it is, right there. F1D. And when I select that, you can actually see down here in HXD. F1D through F22. So we're gonna go copy that. And what we will see, just for a reference is that that is the same binding. And that's how I knew I had it reverse engineer this. That's how I knew that it was the thing that I was interested in. So F1D, I need to make sure to leave that too. Because I don't want those to be there anymore. 
And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to go and let me minimize this for just a moment. If I go to my Avalanche Studios folder in my documents, we have two Call of the Wild folders, which is genius. And this one actually has the bindings. So settings, keep on going in, that's your user code, keymap.json. Excellent, we can open that up. Now, we need to find those bindings here too and get rid of them. So holster open H, that's fine. I'm looking for the gamepad one. There it is, get rid of that. Just delete that whole entry. You have to do it in both places for it to work properly. Now turn me. Uh, tab, that's fine. I'm doing the gamepad. There it is. Left shoulder, get rid of that one. And this will actually remove those from the in-game menu. They won't be bound to anything. So you don't have to like bind them to something you're not using or something. They're simply unbound now. But we're unbinding them so that we don't have to deal with them and so that we can move the hotbar menu to uh, left shoulder, right? Now, I have unbound them, but I I was able to find them by searching Hunter Mate and Holster. That's very convenient to search for, right? I don't know what that hotbar is card. Let's say if I, like, bar, hotbar, doesn't show up anything. R, that's not helpful. I don't know what it's called, and I'm not going to read through this entire thing. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the binding that I know it should be. So here is R pad down. Well, if I go by the same format, L pad up, that's the binding I'm interested in. So, okay, there's one thing. Movie cam shake amplitude increase. I don't think that's the thing I'm interested in. GUI up. No, that's a navigation thing. Switch trophy lodge. I didn't even... Nope. Select item show. That sounds like the thing I'm interested in, but let's look at all the other things just to be sure. DP up? I think that's actually zoom up, and in fact, I have tested already. That is zoom in. Ironically, or weirdly, this one is also redundantly bound inside the keyboard keymap.bin. So if you want to change that, you have to change it in both places. Again, really genius moves. Avalanche knows how to make games. Um, so I'm not seeing anything else, though. So let's select item show. That's clearly the one we're interested in. Um, the current entry is at 1E05. And it is gamepad L up. I don't want it to be gamepad L up. I'm going to go to 1E05 and change it. So 1, A, B, C, D, E, and then 0, 5. Right there. There it is. That is the thing that tells it that it is L, G, P, G, P. L pad up, game pad, left pad up. And I'm going to go back. I've saved this entry. That's the left shoulder. I'm going to copy that. Go in here and just paste it in. So that is over. And you don't want, if you're using HXD, important note, it will tell you if you change the size of the bin. None of the edits we're making here should change the size of the bin. As I mentioned earlier, theoretically, you can add and delete nodes, but that is outside the scope of this. Um, so you do not want to be changing the size of the bin. All we're doing is pasting over top of things. We're getting rid of the old data and putting new data of the same length in its place. So there we go. And just a quick note, all of the bindings that you would want to change, at least in Call of the Wild, they all start with OCF0. Um, they actually start with OCF03579. It's the last two ones that change, but it's convenient to just get the whole six because it's buffered on both sides by zero. So you know exactly what you're looking for. So we've made our changes. We now have turned this entry, this node here, um, at this address, the key, instead of being the one that's held at AC4, it's going to be this thing now. So I can save that, and I have made my changes. But I have not put them in the game yet, so that is the next step. In order to put these changes into the game, we've got the bin made, but the game isn't just going to like know about this mysterious bin. We can close everything. Um, this is the left shoulder binding. You should keep that somewhere. You should save this file and label that. I'm not going to because I already have one somewhere else. Close this. Close all of this. Here is the uh, documents folder of that. I don't need that anymore. Here's that bin. That's the thing I'm interested in. I've made that bin so I can copy that. And now I need to go over into 
the actual game directory once more. And then you're going to make a folder called Drop Zone. And you're going to reproduce inside Drop Zone. You're going to reproduce whatever file directory you got in Extracted. So in my case, it's just one folder called Settings. In your case, it might be multiple folders. It might be different folders. In my case, it's just one folder called Settings. So I have another folder called Settings in here. I have lots of other stuff. So I'm just going to put this into a demo folder so that I know what it is and I can pull it out later. It won't read anything that it doesn't know about. Um, if it's not in the right place and labeled the right thing, it doesn't care. So this is any easy way to get that out of the way. And there is the gamepad.bin. So here's the gamepad.bin that I got. I copied it over and put it in here. Now the game knows where to find it, but it still doesn't know where to look. So we have to go into Steam and open our properties. Go into your properties. They always change this. This is like the third time they've changed it in the past three years. Here is the launch options. You're going to have to find the launch options. Who knows, in 2025, it could be somewhere completely else. But you need to find the launch options for the game. I just got this off the internet. It will be in the description. This just tells the game to actually look for the files. So the game will now actually look for the files and it will be able to find them. So remember, in your all the wild directory or your game directory, drop zone, and then reproduce wherever the layout of the extracted file was, and then the actual edited extracted file. So if I go ahead and launch Hunter, all right, so the game has loaded, and now I am able to actually test the bindings. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the key map just to see. There we go. We're actually in the keyboard key bindings, and. If I go down, I can see, where is it? Holster weapon isn't bound to anything, and hunter mate isn't bound to anything. So normally this is not something achievable in-game. You can either, you can change the bindings, but you cannot get rid of them. And then I also, there is no visible binding for the hotbar. That is normally just hard-coded to D-pad up. But if I press D-pad up, it doesn't do it. If I press left shoulder, it does. And then I can switch items normally and select them normally. Well, anyway, you get the idea. So, see you next time.